in the name of Jesus. We we'll thank you because there is no one like you. Lord, this month we're spending time just to learn about the Holy Spirit and is working in us. And we ask in the name of Jesus Christ that the reality of who the Holy Spirit is and how we can just be effective in that will come upon everyone today. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that everyone will experience a brokenness that will make us depend on God. Everyone will come to that awareness in Jesus' name. While we're standing, um, you know, we can all sit down. While we're sitting down, if there's anybody here, you have a pain, you have a sickness in your body, I want you to just remain standing as we pray. I mean, it's, a, it's a, just a small crowd, but I want to do that this morning. If there's anybody here, you have a pain, you have a sickness in your body, just remain standing as we pray. I want the closest people towards them to just put their hands maybe on their shoulder, someone that you can touch them, and let's pray together. Let's pray. Oh, thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Holy Father. Just, 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 just touch them. Touch them because your hands are special. The Bible says, we shall all lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We command the sickness. We command the pain to go. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke the spirit of infirmity right now. And I command your bodies to be healed. Yes, that's it. I command your bodies to be healed. Someone, you feel a sensation on your body? That's the power of the Holy Spirit. I command your bodies to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, right now, be healed in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. You can go ahead, have your seat, do what you could not do before. Do what you know. That, that's how you exercise your faith. You have to do what you could not do before. So if you, you know, go ahead and do what you could not do before, you know. So just if you, if you could not move the shoulder before, go ahead and move the shoulder. If there was a pain on your finger, I, I can see trying to, you know, do it about three more times. I can see, how, how is it? Yeah, yeah, just do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do you feel any relief? Do you feel any? Tell me. It's gone, right? Oh, wow. And, and look at how she broke that one. Just broke that with tears. That's the grace of God. That's the grace of God. That's the grace of God. And, and you can just see, I literally, what, what's your name? What's your name? Come, come. Oh, wow. It's, oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. I will cry if I was the one. What's your name? Reno. So, so tell me what just happened this morning. So I've had the pain since I had my baby in 2017, and I can't feel anything right now. To be honest, I was skeptical, but I kept doing it, and I can't feel any pain. It's totally gone. Wow. That is awesome. That's awesome. Let me tell you something. When God heals, it shows his heart. It, it's just a thing of his heart. It's just a thing of his heart. The reason why is that when we come to church, oftentimes we can get so caught up in religion and forget that our God is really powerful. Some of you don't need the physical healing. It's a job that you need. But the God can do the same for you. Some of you don't need a job. It's something with your child that you need. God can do the same for you. So, listen, you must learn how to internalize miracles to be like, well, I may not need healing, but if God can do that, then he can do this. And you need to also, this is the problem also, you need to let it affect your mentality so that you can just look through life and say God is what? A miracle working God. And I can believe God for a miracle. I mean, one of, someone that is very close to me got into a huge, huge trouble. Huge, huge trouble. This is a policy issue with the London government. And, you know, I've not been around in the country. As soon as I flew back, I got back yesterday, and that's why you hear me whizzing a little. You know, I got back yesterday, and it was like, are you back? I said, I said, just, just come, let's pray. So we spent the first 20 minutes just praying, and oh, just praying there was a word of prophecy. And I said, the Lord said, it's going to be a long battle. This is going to drag, because they're sending, they sending the UK cops to Nigeria to come and investigate him. I said, it's going to drag. And of course, he made a mistake because of some other things he did. I said, but the Lord said, I should tell you that the loss will not be consequential. And he told me that, you know, just something I said, I've not been able to sleep. I said, I understand why. 
See, and this is one of the beautiful, beautiful things about knowing God. When you know God, one of the things it does for you is to give you assurance. That's the thing. It's assurance. See, so he goes to, he goes and has like a full night's sleep, not because anything has changed, but because the assurance that God is on the throne and God is walking on this. Glory to God. I say glory to God. And you know, for it to be a miracle, it doesn't have to be word. It doesn't have to be word. We don't have to tumble the chair and walk on pregnant people. I mean, it can just be very simple as it is and be a miracle. Glory to God. All right, let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 14. And, and, and I hope that I, I hope that at home you'll be able to pray for someone. I hope in the office you'll be able to pray for someone. Someone says, why do we do that? That's our mandate as Christians, not the mandate of pastors. It's our mandate as Christians. The Lord's prayer says, let your will be done on what? On earth as is what? What does that mean? If there's no sickness in heaven, there should be no sickness on earth. We are the ones that make that happen. If there's no poverty in heaven, there should be no poverty on earth. If there's no, if there's no breaking down in heaven, there should be no breaking down on earth. It's, and listen, it's our duty. That's why we're here. We are kingdom extenders. We are kingdom agents. We're meant to extend the kingdom of that kingdom into this place. Praise the Lord. So if you know someone that is sick, you know, from time to time, just, just, just come to church. Even if you're not praying, meet one of the pastors. You know, it's not about me because the authority is not given to a senior pastor. It's given to, meet, meet Flory, meet anybody and say, can we just agree? This, my friend, is on the wheelchair. Just agree. I, I heard the story recently when I, just when I was um, on the plane, actually. And it was one 15-year-old girl in Accra. She attends Redeemed Church. Who heard the story? I heard it was on social media. One of the redeemed pastors was telling me, and she just met this girl in the wheelchair and felt led to pray for her. That's how the guy stood up. So I says, is that possible? The problem is this. We are so theoretical about our Christianity. And that's why many of you, you struggle because you can't hold on to something you don't really believe. It's difficult to just hold on. And, and I, I, don't, I don't blame you because some of you have tried before. So there's this thing about I was disappointed before. Listen to me. Something about disappointment, you have to go through it. Sometimes it's like a journey. It's like a journey. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. Let's look at John chapter 14 together. This first service. So, so this speaker is just doing a bopping sound. Boom, boom, like that. This speaker over here, it's, it's, it's having a bopping sound. Boom, boom, boom. Like it's a rap. Exactly. Just did it again just now. You want to come and listen to it? John chapter 14. Oh, thank you, Lord. Have you, have you heard the sound, sir? Did you hear the sound I'm talking about? Did you, uh, have you heard the sound I'm talking about? Can you hear it? Okay, exactly. Thank you. So, John chapter 14, verse 16. Or maybe we should start from chapter 16 first. You know, the book is really speaking to what we're talking about today. Verse 12. So, John chapter 16, verse 12, then I can go back to John chapter 14. So, the Bible says that I have many things. It says, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, or, the, the, you know, I'm sorry, you know, someone has said, Pastor, you read the Bible from your mind. It happens. That's, I agree. I agree. Because, remember, I've read it a lot of times, so sometimes I just, so when I see Albert, I know it's however, so I just, like, put it there, you know. However, when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. No, watch this now. So go back to verse 12. Let me, I want to draw something from there. It says, I have many things to say to you now, but you cannot bear them. What does that mean? Number one, the Holy Spirit, the, the, the impact of the Holy Spirit has to do with capacity building. Jesus says to them, he says, I, he says, I want to say some things to you, but the way you are currently the capacity to understand those things I want to share with you is you do not have that capacity. 
He says, so what I want to do right now is that I will send the Holy Spirit. So Jesus himself could not, and the reason why Jesus could not do it was this. Watch this now. Jesus Christ taught them outside in. Oh, glory to God. So Jesus related with them. So they saw him and spoke to them. Their sense saw it and their spirit got a hold of it. He said, but when the Holy Spirit will come, it will begin by doing an inside job. So the Holy Spirit's work is inside out. Jesus Christ began to teach them. And what's the difference? The difference is this. The difference is this. Is teaching, is teaching a child to swim and teaching a fish to swim. For the fish, it's born inherent. He just has to be in water. He's going to swim. For a child, you're going to make a lot of adjustment because you are teaching from outside in. He says, he says when the Holy Spirit comes... Oh my God. He said, when the Holy Spirit comes, there's some things I'm trying to tell you you can't get. And the reason why you can't get them is because it's outside in. He said, but the Holy Spirit will move inside. There will be a change of nature. Glory to God. Uh, <laughs> he says, however, the spirit of truth, he calls him the spirit of truth when it's come. He would guide you. And the word guide you is very, very powerful. He says in an experiential manner, he will guide you into all truth. The Bible says he will not speak of himself. And, and, let me, let, let, and because this is first service, let me just quickly move through the langs. One of the things the Holy Spirit does is this. It reveals God to us. You can't know God except through the Holy Spirit. And, and, and let me tell you something, that's a very, like, huge, you know, but what that means is this. Someone says, I, I want to know God. It's that, how does he help us know God? That nudging, that expansion on the inside to know God comes from the Holy Spirit. That thing comes from the Holy Spirit. Because, because this is what some of you want to do. Some of you want to spend more time to pray. But that's the thing. You can't just wake up and say, I want to spend more time to pray. It's difficult that way. It takes you to you to the Holy Spirit to spend more time to pray. So one of the things the Holy Spirit, and, and, and that's why sometimes when you try to explain spiritual truth to people, they will never see it. And the reason why they will never see it is this. These things of the spirit are not naturally understood. It takes a spirit inside us to help us see. Listen, let me tell you something about speaking in tongues. I received the Holy Spirit maybe like 93, 94. I can't remember someone around that early, in the early 90s. And I remember before I received the Holy Spirit, I thought faking in, speaking in tongues was fake. You know, I remember one time people were falling down and I stood, and I, you know, because I was already born again. I stood like they were like, oh, this is all nonsense. This is all made up. I mean, someone puts hands on you, puts on a degree. Like, I mean, it, it, because sometimes people put their hands for it too long. Like, I'm like, I mean, that guy is going to fall down. I mean, the hand has been on the head for a long time. It's going to fall down. The same thing with speaking in tongues. I, like, ah, you know, because I had, when, when I was younger, the guys that lived in the apartment below our apartment were spirit filled. And they used to have all night. So I just used to say, Rama, Mama, 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 Shaba, ba, 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 ba. So, you know, as a joke, as a child, I would just, you know, I'd be like, ma, 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 ma. Then my mom used to make things complicated. She said, I don't know their mother that is missing that they're looking for. My mom used to make that complicated. He said, I don't know where their mother is. And they, all night they're looking for their mother. But guess what? When the Holy Spirit opened my eyes, I began to say, ma, 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 and ba, 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 ba. And the reason why is that, my eyes were just open. The reason why, some of you, you know why you're struggling? You are really hoping to grow spiritually by some kind of mental resolution. If you're going to really grow spiritually, you are going to know the Holy Spirit to open you up. And that thing is a choice of believing. This morning, there are things the Holy Spirit have been talking to me about for years. I, I could see... And sometimes the journey of the Holy Spirit is very difficult because all through my trip, I could see the Holy Spirit just touching two or three things. It was touching one, two, three, one, two, three, one. And how does it touch it? This is how you know the Holy Ghost is dealing with you. You begin to hear the same thing in different conversations. Who knows what I'm talking about? You know, like this guy is talking about Japanese prime minister. And like, but what the Holy Ghost is telling you, you begin to, it just cannot tally. Then you come to church. Then the pastor goes and just mistakenly cracks a joke that is never in the message. And he, he, boom! Like, oh, wow. Then after the service, you meet some random guy that goes like, the Holy Spirit is talking to you. And he says, what, what do you mean by that? I'm just joking. But, I mean, that's it. 
So this morning, I, I like, you know, Lord, this, from last night, I said, I said, Lord, because I've just been some decisions I had to make about my personal spiritual life and consecration. And I said, Lord, I've been thinking, and this is where it came to. I said, I've been thinking of how tough what you're asking me is to do. But as I was praying for the message, it just really dawned on me that when Jesus was alive, the reason why I could not help much was he was doing the work outside in. When the Holy Ghost came, he began to do the work what? inside out. Meaning that there's nothing he's asking you to do that is not already working inside you. So much so that it's not huge. There's just a work already on the inside of you. So one of the things the Holy Spirit does is to reveal the Father to us. You cannot the Father after the Holy Spirit. And, and someone says, okay, so how is this a practical thing? This is how it is a practical thing for you. The more you open up yourself to being led, to following, to being guided by the Holy Spirit, the more the reality of the fact and the word of God becomes with you. And that's why the Bible says the spirit of truth will guide us into all reality. The second thing the Holy Spirit will do for you is this. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit conveys the presence of Jesus. That is huge. That is huge. See, all of us here, <laughs> all of us can convey, all of us have the potential to carry God's presence. And all of us actually do have God's presence. You know, Jesus Christ said something. He said, anywhere two or three are gathered in my name. What, what, what did he say? There am I in them. But he's on the throne. How is he there again? He's on the throne as the son of God in heaven, but he's with us in the person of the Holy Spirit because he and the Holy Spirit are one. Do you know what it means to have the divine presence of the Holy Spirit? I'm telling you, when you have that divine presence, it stays in your home. People just walk to your home. You don't even have to be praying. It's just the fact that when I walk to someone's home, I just know. When you walk to anointed people's houses, people that are conscious of what they carry, it's obvious that they carry something. You know, you know something? I met a guy, and for one year, I was a pastor. The day eventually, he said, I knew there was something weird about you. He said, I knew it from day one. I knew from, I just couldn't put my hands on it. I just knew. Because the truth is that if you meet me outside church, I tell you two things. What is my name? What do you do? What do you do? I work for a non-profit. That's all I say. This is the age where being a pastor is definitely very attractive. You know, I met a guy on the plane yesterday. After we're spoken, spoken, spoken. So he's like, oh, I, I, I like you. Give me your number. Let's do some work together. So I told him about our HSAP project. So, uh, oh, true color doesn't help things at all. So he dialed my number and Pastor Bola just said, oh, you're a pastor? He said, oh, if you told me you're a pastor, well, I'm not, I've stopped talking to you. I said, that's the whole idea. Because sometimes the way they deceive people is just to throw the number for I'm a pastor. So like when you're a pastor, you're like, you know, then they deceive you. I'm like, if I don't have to tell you I'm a pastor. If you look at my life and it's okay, you will know there's something about that life. But, but the thing is that there's something about the, wait, 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 the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit inside you, you convey the presence of God. The point is this. When you convey the presence of God, there are some things that cannot stand God's presence. No, that's too weak a response. There are some things that cannot stand God's presence. You, you walk into a place, you walk into a place, and people just start shaking. And all the people that have autism just shaking. Why are they shaking? Because someone with a divine presence has walked into a place. The presence, oh my God, the presence of God was so strong on Jesus that a woman touched the garment. He, 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 and there was just a discharge. Praises of God was so strong on the apostles that they walked past and shadow. There was no even clothes, just shadow, just the shadow fell. And, and, and it was not really about the shadow, it was just the fact that they were conveyors of a divine presence. Let me tell you something. Someone says, Okay, what does that mean to me? This is what it means to you. When you are aware of what you carry, even when you speak in the boardroom, there's this silent because it's almost as if Mr. Wisdom is going to talk now. How can you have, how can you have divine presence and be, and be depressed? And you have kids that grew up in those homes full of divine presence. Glory to God. 
the fourth thing the Holy Spirit does to you is this. I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to wrap, wrap it up and go to the outline. The thought of the Holy Spirit, it gives you ability. It, it, it gives you, when I say ability, it just gives you an extra. So, I, I'll say it as a pastor and I'll tell you. So, when I say pastor, and I say pastor as a student pastor. So, you know, I didn't have experience in church, planting, all of those things, you know, that kind of thing. So, we set this fellowship with two or three people. Then one day, it just occurred to me that we need to be having a workers' meeting. So, we started holding a workers' meeting. So, about three or four years later, I read, I read somewhere that says that, oh, the strength of the church is that the church is able to have a core that has been discipled. So, I did something. This is the thing I'm saying. I did something that I was not aware of that was a key principle in achieving something. But I did it because of the awareness and inclination of the Holy Spirit. That's, what, that's divine ability. So let me talk about business. You know what David said? Many of you, many of you really think that. Question, who trained David as a soldier? Remember he was not in the army, but remember his brothers were in the, in the military. His brothers were in the military, but he was not in the army. So who trained him? So it was self-trained. What did David say? David said, the Lord trained my hand to war. He says, what, what does that mean? He says, this skillfulness I have, this military intelligence I have, it was not because I went to school that there was just an ability given to me by God that made me that way. What does that mean? If you're a negotiator, there's negotiation you learn from Harvard. There's negotiation you learn from Stanford. But you can now say, Holy Spirit, teach me something. This, um, I had a testimony. There's a company in California. I think it's around Reddings. And this company, they do um, health ultras, ultrasound um, um, surgical procedure. So what happens is this. They can, um, if, if you need like a knee replacement, it used to be very painful. I think what they can do is that they can just really use sound to get exactly what you need. Because people do need replacement and do it about three or four times because it's not perfect. So they, they can use a machine and just do it. So the, one of the key guys in the company, they had designed the, the, the technology, but there was one piece that was missing. And for, you know when you have a problem and for like one month or two or three months, you guys just don't know what to do. The guy just, it just occurred to him, you know what, we've had this problem, I've never asked the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit. He just went. And he just stood out of the office. And God said, God told me, look at that point there. Link it with that point there. And put that point there. He said, once that happened, he said, the solution became complete. The same thing happened to Pastor Deboe. I don't know if he had his testimony. He said, when he was watching his PhD testimonies, he ended up with PhD in applied mathematics. He ended up with 24 simultaneous quadratic equations. That's 24. I don't know why I've heard that story before. He ended up with 24. That, he said, how can I even, he said, for what, he said, this is one question that became 24. I said, and, and, and this is what he said. He said, the nature of PhD in applied mathematics is this. You are given a mathematical question that nobody knows if there's an answer or not. He said, that's it's a PhD. He said, so if there's no answer, you have to prove there's no answer. If there's an answer, you have to prove there's an answer. He said, so it's like dying right there. He said, so when I end up with it, for, he said that for, th for months, I didn't know what to do about it. He said, one day I was just reading my Bible and the Holy Spirit just breathed on it. And the Holy Spirit said, how did I part the Red Sea? On the right and on the left. He said, take the 24 quadratic equation, split them into two. 12 here, 12 here. He said, as he split them, he just saw a correlation and they began to cancel out and he had a solution. The Holy Spirit. Glory to God. S single guys and single girls, just ask him, Holy Spirit, why am I single? You've asked every other person what they think about you. You've never asked them before. Boom. Boom, boom. That's a light bomb moment for you. Because you ask people like, ah, what's wrong with me? How come people are not dating me? What went wrong? You ask everybody. The only person that knows you in and out, you never asked. Because all the people that you're talking about know you halfway. They know what you want to say and what you don't want to say. But he knows you say, why am I single? You will be surprised he has an opinion. The Holy Spirit gives ability. Gives ability. Sometimes we are struggling in the marriage. Let me tell you something. Let the Holy Spirit give you ability. Sometimes you are struggling in the job. Let the Holy Spirit give you ability. And the thing is this. He's not coming to give you this thing. He already stays inside of you. So he's just allowing what is inside of you to what? Come out. 
So as I don't have patience, don't talk like that. I have the Holy Spirit and I can be patient. Someone says, I'm not very good in this. Don't talk like that. I have the Holy Spirit and I can be good in this. This is how Paul the Apostle said. Paul the Apostle said, I can do all things, what? Through Christ. Stop letting what you can do define you. Let the ability of the Holy Spirit define you. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. This is huge now. And let me tell you something. You just have to trust that, you know. I mean, I was in this Christian meeting last week, and uh, sometimes you hear testimonies that just blow out your faith. Like, they blow out your faith. And the guy was like, oh, went to Malaysia. I went to feed 5,000 people. <laughs> you know, 5,000 people. And these are proper people. These are not like all these things you see on social media. Proper people. You know, you know, like 5,000 people. So we had food for 5,000. He said, but when we got to Malaysia, the crowd had grown to 25,000. He said that we didn't have any more resource to feed them because we had come from North America. He said, so our team said, let's pray and let's feed what we can feed and let the Lord just do the rest. And they had all these sacks. You know, when you put all the food in sacks, he said that something miraculous happened. He said, as soon as we reached like halfway in the sack, the sack would just fill up. He said, we just noticed that we fed, we fed 25,000 people. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So someone says, why don't I value the Holy Spirit? The only reason I don't value the Holy Spirit, you don't see the need for it. That's the only reason. Because, you know, because, you know, religion has thought that the Holy Spirit is about shaking. So, when they say Holy Spirit, what comes to your mind is, I'm going to shake, I'm going to fall, I'm going to vibrate under the chair. Like, that's all about the Holy Spirit. But that's not, see, the Holy Spirit is not wind. He's a person. He's a person. So, when you know the Holy Spirit, your life becomes better. Your job becomes better. Your relationship becomes better. The reason why it becomes better is this. Listen to me. Everybody look up here. Everybody tells you what you must do. Everybody motivates you from the outside. It's the Holy Spirit that works from within. Everybody works from the outside. The Spirit works from within. And that is so liberating. So sometimes, let me tell you something. Most of you even act under the influence of the Holy Spirit and you don't know it. Because it's not even a voice you hear. You know what you hear? It's, it's just like, I feel like doing this. You don't even know that. I, you know, someone says, do you have a scripture for that? The Bible says, it's God that works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. You just feel. You don't know that that feeling is an extension of God's power. Yesterday, when I, when I go back to the country, I normally do like a five-kilometer walk and run on Saturday morning. So I called up some guys that we do it together. I'm like, hey, let's go, let's go. Like, well, you're, I'm back. So as we're going, we're coming down the Koyi Bridge. And we're coming back to the Koyi Bridge. I mean, we're just chatting away, walking, just chatting away, like talking about different kind of things. You know, we were talking about, I mean, there's this guy that was running with us that just got born again in church. And he was giving us like his testimony. I mean, I met him personally. I, was, I just love his testimony. He's just 20, 27, and he told me that, oh, do I believe that within the last two years that I slept about 600 girls? You know, I'm like, oh, wow. So, <laughs> I mean, they were like, <laughs> so the other guy was like, oh, that he, he did 15 and he's 30. We're like, ah, oh, yeah, he's saints, man. I said, what about people that just don't want or two all their life? He said, that that's not possible, Pastor. So we're just like, these are all the gist we're having, conversation. And I love our church that we can have people like that. I just love our church. I just love our church that, you know, we can, we can just be a place. Because I, I said, what attracted it? Just the fact that, he said I, he said, I just love the way you preach. You just seem to understand everybody. You just seem to be able to connect with me. And, and that's the dream for our church. That our church will always be a place that the worst of people can come and find hope. That, that's the dream. And, and that's why if you're not inviting someone to church, you're doing a bad thing. Because you found hope. You found Christ. Extend it to somebody else. And you know the thing when I say Christian invite somebody, you look know, for someone that goes to redeem and invite them. Leave the redeeming people alone. Look for someone in your office that you know doesn't go anywhere. He goes by saying, I have a church, but he's not been there in six months. That's the guy you should invite. That's the girl you should invite. You know the Casanova, you know the guy that sleeps with everybody in the office. That's the guy you should invite. You know why? When people move desperately in sin, it's a way of demonstrating an emptiness on the inside. Oh, you didn't get that. But that's a good time to just clap. You know, you know, that's a good time. That's a good time to say, wow, praise God. That's a good time to say something. Hanson, that's a good time to say something. 
Hallelujah. Sister Tony, that's a good time to say something. Aha, aha, that's, that's good. That's a good time. So when you see people, like when you see just people, have, how do you know people are broken? Brokenness show in different ways. That's the truth. So when you see people moving desperately in sin, it's just because they are broken. So what do you do? Just invite them. So this guy was telling me all the stories. And as we're saying, we just saw the one car stop on the express, on the bridge. And this woman came and told the driver to get down and all those things. I was like, oh, wow. We think that guy is fired. I said, we think that guy is fired. And um, I said, I don't know. And, and the guy that was running just said, I, I just feel led to talk to him. And he went to him and said, what happened? And he said, ah, Madam just fired me. I said, wow. He said, and guess what? He said, maybe he was going to a jar and he doesn't have money because they give him money like, you know how you give your driver stipend. He was expressing that day stipend to go home. He said, I'm going to have to work. And the guy said, no, just follow us. He walked from the MS ATM machine. Gave him some money and said, this is for your boss, Waja. Let's pray over you. And we prayed over him. Why did you do that? Just something led of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, there are some of you here, the Holy Spirit begins to tell you, build relationship with this, your next boss. And you don't know the reason why. And the reason why is that very soon when your appraisal come, that guy will become very instrumental to your promotion. But sometimes because you cannot see ahead, you don't respond well. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit will tell you as you come to church, say hi to the next person next to you. And you're like, uh, mm -hmm. because you're single and he's single and he's not the kind of guy you want. He's not the kind of guy you want. He's his older brother. He's meant to, you're meant to date. But you are so foolish in natural understanding, you can't get beyond yourself. Can you just be humble and let God lead you? And sometimes it's not even about dating, just about the business opportunity that you have there. Because see what the Bible says here. See what the Bible says here. Last one minute. Oh, this is good. Pastor Jab, I messed up everything right now. John 16 verse 13. He says, however, when the Spirit of God is come, he would guide you. Did you notice he doesn't force you? What does he do? guide you. Can I show you the difference? So, can you, can you come? Yeah. Let me show you what a guide does. A guide guides you in two ways. This is a guide. If I'm a tourist guide, and we're going on maybe a safari, um, maybe we're going through some, some dangerous places, I'll just say, follow me. Follow me. And did you see that? The Holy Spirit just leads you the way. And how does he lead you the way? Through your what? Internal reactions. The other way he guides you is this. As you're going, he, he just goes, he, you, would, you would see him you just, you just guide, you know? You just like, he will just edge you out. Thank you. He said, however, when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide into our truth. He, and he will not speak of himself. But whatever I shall hear, shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Listen, people. If you don't see things to come, you are a word person. You should be able to tell from time to time that God spoke to me. I, I remember my second son. He has a peculiar personality amongst all our kids. But before he was born, in fact, that influenced his name. The Lord spoke to me and said, when it comes, it's going to be this and this and this and this and this and this and this. Some of those things you don't even say out because you don't want the children to have like issues with themselves because God says about different about different them, all of them. But it just, as they grow, it just begins to influence you. He will show you things to come. When last did you hear of things to come in your office or prophecy? When last did you tell? See, he didn't say prophet to tell you things to come. He said the Holy Spirit will show you. Oh my God. You, you, you don't have to go to anywhere. To find any prophet or to sort anything or to break anything or to go for a breakthrough seminar. He said, he will show you things to come. The reason why people go to prophets is that they want a prophet to take responsibility of what the Holy Spirit is doing in their life. And that's why they get into confusion and fold. The reason why is this. Let me say this to you quickly. You, maybe you should follow me on Twitter and Instagram because I've been posting some powerful stuff. This is what I said. I said, any church or person that exhausts the word more than a voice, they will get into deception. You know the reason why you must know this? Because when the Holy Spirit begins to show you stuff, it must line up with the word. The word is a primary source of revelation. Let's pray. Let's pray. Will you stand on your feet? And will, will you just hold someone close to you and let's pray that this person will have a rich relationship with the Holy Spirit. Let's go ahead and pray for this person. Oh, let's go ahead and pray that this person will have a rich relationship with the Holy Spirit. Oh, 
let's go ahead and pray. Let's pray that they will experience the assurance that comes from the knowing the Holy Spirit. That the ministry of the Holy Spirit will be reading their heart. Let's pray that everyone here will come up with such a hunger for the Lord. Such a thirst for the Lord. Such hunger, such thirst. Such hunger, such thirst.